Hey guys, OG Albani here, bringing you guys yet another draft tier list. Today, we're going to be looking at the Unova region, Generation 5, ranking the Pokemon and how well they do in Draft League, their value in Pokemon Draft League for their relative price point, as well as taking into account their entire history, whether it be Gen 6, 7, 8, or 9, or including Nat Dex, much of this may have Keegan. If you guys do enjoy these tier list videos and are hyped for the Unova region, be sure to drop a like on the video, as well as subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 5,000 subs by the end of the year, and I can't get there without your help. So I'd really appreciate it if you took the time and dropped a sub on the channel. And um, yeah, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Now, keep in mind too, this is another deck that's gonna be a little bit interesting, right? Because I feel like Unova has some great Pokemon. It's a Pokemon I really love. It's actually my favorite uh, region outside of Gen 3, so probably second favorite. Um, I love the decks, I love the Mons. But they're also not great. We're going to be ranking them relative to each other. So a Pokemon that would be S tier in this list might be B tier or A tier in like say Gen 3 stacks or Gen 8 stacks or whatever it may be. So keep that in mind as we're going. Don't compare them to the last videos. Look at them in a vacuum of Generation 5 Pokemon stacked up against each other. All right. That being said, I feel like I really want to preface that. That being said, I'm putting Victini in S tier. Now, this might be a hot take. I know a lot of people really don't like Victini but it's one of my favorite Pokemon to use. It is actually my all-time kill leader. It's uh, over 100 kills all time for me. I've drafted it a ton in Generation 7, 8, um, and once in a Gen 9 Nadex League, but absolutely phenomenal Pokemon. I love using this thing. Um, it's, it's very versatile, really just in the offensive sense of the word, but that's great. I mean, obviously you think of like Choice Band, V creates, pop it off, and two it killing and O-Killing resist, right? But on top of that, we're a great Scarfer. We even have access to like Final Gambit variants. Um, boots for attacks that are great, whether it be physical, special, or mix. Like Specs Victini is also incredibly strong too, going off really strong blue flares. Victory Star is a really valuable ability on a Pokemon that has some pretty inaccurate moves that you can tech on coverage for. I mean, it's very viable to run Thunder on this guy if earning a full special set. Fusion Bolt and V Create pretty much never miss are also incredibly incredibly valuable for Victini. This Pokemon is really really phenomenal. Absolutely great Pokemon. I know some people think it kind of fell off bad speed tier, weak to rocks, but I think with boots and Gen 8 especially it was great and I'm a big Victini stand. I gotta keep him in S tier first. So that's just me. Uh, we'll move Servine in D tier here. I think it is draftable. We're not gonna talk on it too much. It basically does what Serp does, but worse. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put Serp up in, um, we're gonna put it in A tier. I think we're gonna put it in A tier. Um, the reason I have an A tier is because I think Generation 8 Nat Dex Serp is pretty bad if you're banning Hidden Power, and Generation 9 Serp is very terrible. Right? Um, however, with Terra, I think it's a great, great, huge, huge threat for a ton of teams to deal with, with Terra Blast giving it great coverage, um, or giving it Stellar Terra Blast to boost Contra even further. You're spamming Leech Storm, you're glaring things, you might sub leech down, and you can really push past your own checks a lot of the time, but I think it really does want that extra coverage that it kind of misses out on sometimes. If it's not Terra, then there is an opportunity cost in Terra your Superior over something a little bit better, which I think is tough, but I think it's also been seriously very good in Generation 6 and 7, so this might be the top of A tier, like the tippy top of A tier, um, but I definitely think it's pretty darn good. All right, next up, we have Bernardo, Big Embor. Really fun Pokemon. I feel like I saw it a lot in Generation 6, not so much in Gen 7 and 8. Um, actually, I don't think it was in the game in Gen 8, but Gen 9, I've seen a little bit of resistance for it, especially with like low tier Terra. But I don't think I can justify putting it above C tier. I think the issue with Embor is like, while it's very strong, great wall breaker, it's very slow. It's not the bulkiest thing in the world. And when it comes to firefighting alternatives, you have two better starters in both Blaziken and Infernape, which you're typically going to draft over those guys if you're looking for that type combination in particular. And you have a lot of better fighting types in general as well. Now, do I think Embor is bad? No, I think it's probably going to be one of the better Pokemon in C tier. And I could definitely see it potentially moving up to B tier. But I think it's speed tier and it's low bulk kind of holds it back just a little bit. All right, next up, we got Hammerot and Samurott. Samurott is going to go down here in D tier. Not a great Pokemon. I think this is really funny, the dichotomy of man, how much this guy is going to switch up and go differently. Um, we have big Samurott. Not great. I mean, decently strong, bulky-ish water with no recovery. Not a lot of utility. Okay with an SD. I think I think bottom of C is actually kind of fine for it. Um, I, mean, I might be shitting on a little too much. But then we have Hisui and Samurott, and I think this guy by far definitely goes next year one of the best pokemon in this generation obviously we only have one gen as a sample size but the concept of clicking an attacking move that sharpness boosted by your ability and does a ton of damage that also sets up spikes and has no immunities is insane i mean the concept of it alone the only downside is potentially missing 
There's not even immunity. So even if you're attacking and you do a Galarian Wheezing that eats your attacks up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're still getting value. You're getting up a spike. Now it can defog, but you can take advantage. I, I just picked a bulky fairy off the top of my head. Um, say Clefable. Even if you don't predict the Clefable and click Razor Shell, which you can do a KO, um, depending on the set or if we get that crit or defense drop and things like that. Um, even if you aren't predicting and you're just clicking Ceaseless Edge, you're getting up a spike. You can SD shoot this guy. It has great uh, priority on both sides in Aqua Jet and Sucker Punch. I think it's also great with an Assault Vest. I love Assault Vest Hammer on. Um, and it has great coverage like Sacred Sword, um, x Scissor, things like that that are also going to be sharpness boosted on top of its stabs, which are ridiculously strong. And you can kind of just click those most of the time anyway. So great, great Pokemon. I'm a big Samurott fan. I think just the concept of clicking spikes while attacking is really, really broken personally. Um, next up, we unfortunately, we're in the early decks, so we've gotten past the starters and random Victini at the top. That means we're getting to the terrible Pokemon, and they are going to be tiered accordingly. First up is Watchhog. I actually couldn't tell you what Watchhog does. It's a shitty low tier normal that doesn't really do anything, so I'm not, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. These videos are long enough as is, so we're, we're just going to keep rolling. I mean, look at all the mods we got to get through, gang. Um, then we have Stoutland. Stoutland, I think, definitely deserves like a C tier shout out just because it's had sand viability in the past with Sand Rush. Um, it also has access to Intimidate and Scratchy, two valuable abilities. So great abilities overall and was a decently strong wall breaker in generation six and seven, either on sand teams, uh, really only on sand teams, but it could run other sets like Scrappy and things of the sort. The only issue with Stoutland in generation eight and why it was terrible in that gen, in my opinion, was this loss of uh, return. So losing a really great normal stab option, uh, probably it's most reliable, you know, move to do so. So I think that um, it's pretty bad in generation eight. It's not in generation nine, so we can't really judge it on how it would be now. Um, personally, not a Pokemon I really like, but I think it deserves a C tier shout out regardless from like an objective standpoint. Next up, we have Lipard. Also gonna go in D tier. Um, there's like some prankster shenanigans you could do and Purloin is great, little cup draft. Um, but Lipard isn't great otherwise, unfortunately. Just bad stats, cool ability and prankster, but really can only count like T-Wave and Encore, I believe. I think it gets Encore and Taunt, um, which are all valuable you know, things, but we can also just attack an Oko because it's a life heart and we're not super worried about that. Um, next up we get the Simmies. What do I want to rank the Simmies? Oh, there's some, there's some stinkers in this early tiers, in these early tiers, man. There's some stinkers in these. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and put these guys in tier. Maybe they'll be the gold standard for D tier. They're all going to be pretty similar. They all like can nasty plot sweep technically. Um, and they're decently strong don't have the best coverage in the case of like simi sage so we'll put him at the bottom offensive fires are cool and it's a niche thing that not a lot of like it's not like the most common role so we'll put that one the highest i think it's grass not for grasses which is cool um and then offensive like water ice grass is also pretty cool in simi core so like we'll give it that but their stats are bad and their stats are bad edge and they just don't stack up unfortunately to the rest of the game so and justifiably put it across Big Musharna. Dude, I want to be a psycho and put this thing in B tier because I love Musharna. I'm going to put it in C tier for now, though. Poor B tier is still absolutely barren. Um, but I like Mush. I think uh, in Generation 7 especially, you saw a lot of Musharnas for, like, the scary, strong fighting type Megas. So, like, as a low to point Pokemon, like a really low point Pokemon, you got great value out of Musharna getting a guaranteed Mega Gallade and Mega Metacham check just for a super, super cheap amount. If you're a League of Loud Baton Pass, you could always use that for momentum or even passive stats for League was Extra Psycho. And you can even call Mind Up and be a big nuisance in that regard. So I think Musharna is actually a great Pokemon for its value in the generations which it's uh, in the game. It's not in Gen 9. Decent Gen 8. There's not as much crazy offensive fightings in that game. But like, imagine if like Great Tusk was in the game, or like if this is in the game, it could like soft check like Great Tusk and things of the sort. Even like Iron Valiant. It's pretty darn bulky, depending on what set the Iron Valiant is, obviously. But yeah, I probably doesn't check Valiant very well for six packs. But regardless, really, really solid Pokemon. Musharna, it was a ton. You saw it a ton in Generation 7 back in the day. So he deserves his, uh, his shout out. Next up is Unpheasant. Um, Unpheasant is an Unmon. We're gonna go ahead and put it in D tier. We'll, we'll do the cool little one with the little, the little mask on. That's pretty dope. Um, unfortunately, the Pokemon that isn't great. I guess Super Luck is like funny. Uh, I know John used it well when we did like tier five Dynamax at the beginning of Generation Eight, but the Pokemon's not doing well with Dynamax. Probably shouldn't be a Pokemon at that. It probably shouldn't be drafted at all at that point. So. Yeah, it's gonna go D here. And this is pretty similar to Gen 4, where I feel like there's a lot of bottom of the barrel guys in this deck. Speaking of which, probably one of the worst Pokemon of all time. Um, Substrika is ungodly bad. Um, 
great abilities, right? It gets, uh, what do you call it? Sap Sipper and Motor Drive is two immunity abilities, which is awesome. But at the same time, it's just, it's stats and move pool just do not stack up. It's too weak, it's too frail, and it does not have the offensive move pool to account for its weaknesses. Um, and I just think it's completely undraftable because of that. I'm a big low tier electric hater. Um, I don't know why, I just despise them, and I don't think that, uh, to strike is any uh and i think it's actually one of the worst offenders of that kind of idea so down there in c tier or d tier it goes uh towards the bottom i'll say it's better than watch i'll give it that um then we got big giggle and i personally want to put it in a tier i'm a big giggle guy i think objectively though it goes here in b um my personal favorite sand center right um especially if i'm drafting with this guy down here um, obviously this thing is undraftable in Gen 6 or very bad in Gen 6, does not have Sandstream, but starting in Gen 7 and in Gen 8, um, great, great sand setter, and I see it as budget T-Tar, right? I don't like, and I said in the Gen 4 video, I don't know if you guys remember or have watched it, go watch it, uh, but Hippowdon, great bulky Pokemon and great bulky ground, not a good sand setter, especially if you're drafting extra drill sand because they're checked by similar things. I like Tyranitar and Giggle a little bit more because while they might be kind of soft checked by similar things, they're not hitting the same things right in the sense that like a bulky grass or water might switch in um, especially in the case of a grass might switch in on egg giggles but we're getting off a strong stone edge and hitting it really hard and breaking it down for extra drill later whereas like the bulky grass checks both hip out on and extra drill really really well so i like that aspect of it i love choice fan giggleth i love um just regular stand setting giggleth which is rocks iron defense body press was great last generation um, I won a Wi-Fi championship in Generation 8, specifically with Gigalith and Drill um, and Latios. One of my favorite cores is Lottie Sand, and this is a sand that I usually go for because while Tyranitar is better than Gigalith, obviously, and I don't have to, you know, you know, convey that, I'm sure we know. But what it isn't is um, it's not cheaper, and Gigalith is very cheap, so you get a great, great roll for a cheap, cheap price with Extra Drill. It does the job really well, and you can use those points elsewhere for a Latios or something of the sort, so... I really like Giggle for that. I think it is one of my favorite Pokemon to draft in general um, when it comes to weather. Uh, I think it definitely deserves a spot here. Next up, we got Swoobat. Swoobat's going to go here in C tier. We'll put it behind Musharna. Um, it's kind of a cheese potential mod, right? If you have like some terrain offense, you might be able to swat on a Swoobat for a couple points, throw a grassy seed, electric seed on whatever it is, simple boost up, and then start calm minding. And if a team is unprepared, you will lose to Swoobat. It happens. I have 100% seen it happen. Um, however, what I say, it's like great at that job. No, because again, it just comes down to stats, and stats are not great, and they're not specific in the area that you need them to be specific in. They're just kind of generally mediocre to bad in some areas. So I think that really holds it back, but it's also very fast. Um, it can be pretty solid in that regard. And also, Wubat is awesome in the Little Cup. So again, value there. Finally, we get to move back up a little bit higher, though. We have Excadrill, and it's going to go here in S tier, a little bit above Victini. As much as I put Victini number one, I think objectively Excadrill is it's such an iconic Pokemon. Again, we just talked about Sand Offense for like five minutes, um, but Sand Offense is such a common archetype, and the reason it's seen a lot is because it's good. Whether it be the infamous, you know, uh, or I guess famous Yard, or yard Sand in, you know, Oras and things of the sort, um, serving as a great rabbit spinner for a Pokemon like that. Lottie Sand being really, really phenomenal because the Pokemon, you know, really pair with each other well and a million other x plus sand cores um because like extra drill is such a scary pokemon whether it be as an sd sweeper with the sand up or whether it be with a choice band or a life or just click and attacks and buttons right and outside of sand it's still good we have mold breakers an option which is a great ability to secure rocks a lot of times in magic bound matchups and things like that or um eq through sturdies and things like that which is also really nice eq through levitates rotom wash you are not safe all of the time you see that mold breaker pop you got to get out because extra is going to blow you up which is really cool so also a great defensive typing we see it with iron treads this generation well extra drill is not used as defensively as iron treads um you're naturally going to take on hits that you need to and if you need to like soft check something like uh, a tapu coco you wall it right um zero aura you throw on a chopper berry for that close combat and you can pivot into it pretty decently especially if sands up and i gotta be careful about knockoff but regardless solid pokemon love me some drill um, a Pokemon I feel really comfortable using personally, and I really wish it was good. I miss me some real and I really do. All right, next up we have Audino and Mega Audino. Both of these guys are. We're gonna put. Okay, this is what we'll do. We're gonna put Audino in B tier, and Mega Audino in C tier. Now, why are they? We're gonna talk both about both of them at the same time because most of the time Mega Audino is Audino, and that's where it's valuable, 
right? And since that um, Audino is a great regenerator pivot, pure normal, so only one weakness, we wish we knock off Heal Bell, we Thunder Wave and Toxic, because this isn't a Pokemon that's in Generation 9, it was only Generation 8 and prior. Um, it's not in the Gen 9 decks. There's a lot of Pokemon like that, so this is a history lesson for your draft supers. Um, but it really is just annoying. You Encore, you Wish, you Thunder Wave, you Toxic, you switch out, you keep your team healthy, and you're very reliable at doing so. You're very passive offensively, but you have great moves to kind of, you know, mitigate that and deal with that. Mega Audino is the same. You Wish, you Heal Bell, you Pivot out with Regen, and then, if you need to, you can Mega Evolve, gain a Fairy Typing, so get rid of that Fighting Weakness, and get immensely, immensely bulkier, and gain a Stab in Dazzling Wave, which is great. Deagling plus Flamethrower can also work out in, like, Calm Mind matchups, so you can definitely see, like, you know, Calm Mind all Dino's put in some work. Still pretty passive offensively, very bulky. The only issue is it loses Regenerator, and that's kind of a trade-off you'll have to make, and you have to make that decision. Same thing with, um, Mega Slowbro, right? You talk about in one. The only issue, and the reason I have Mega Aldino lower, and then not on the same tier at least, is because of the opportunity cost. If you're drafting a Mega Pokemon and you're drafting Audino, Audino is not terrible, and really there's no Mega Pokemon that are just straight up terrible, but that means we're not drafting another the downside right we're not drafting another mega pokemon um and a lot of those ones do just end up having a little more value for a lot of teams and uh it's just kind of the case with audino as much as i've drafted it and enjoyed it um on generation eight and seven it just kind of you know depends on what your team needs and how you're looking all right next up is big conkelder i don't think i can justify putting an a tier especially because i've seen a big fall off this generation but i think b tier is completely fine for this guy i mean wall breaker incarnate guts you click drain punch slash close combat mock punch for priority knock off elemental punches edge quake i mean crazy offensive coverage they just slow um but if you can position it in on fatter teams and you're playing into balance you can just click buttons which is obviously really, really nice it's a really strong pokemon have not seen it very much this generation despite it being in Deck, so I'd love to see somebody pop off with some Conk Elder. Maybe I'll draft it again soon because it's Pokemon I love using, but you know, just something to keep in mind. Oh, and Girder. Girder just loses a little bit more defensively. I think this guy definitely deserves a shout out C tier. Um, again, just holding an Eviolite, but also status immune, which is nice. You knock, Drain Punch, uh, Mock Punch, all that fun stuff. You can defog on both these guys too. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can defog on both these guys too, which is cool. The only issue with Girder that I don't like is you're a fighting type that can't switch it on knockoff. Um, which can be really annoying in some matchups, right? Like, you might be able to technically take on Weavile, um, but not really, because you're gonna get knocked off with your Eevee Light, and then you get to a kill by Triple Axel, and like, I sure don't have that. Like, if a spike is up or something, so. Not the most reliable check to a lot of offensive darks, which I don't like a lot by fighting type. Um, but still a very solid Pokemon, nonetheless. Alright, next up, it's all tried and true, reliable. Big size for Toad. I think he's got to be our second A tier slot. Um, absolutely phenomenal Pokemon. A Pokemon I have drafted an unhealthy amount of times. I absolutely love this size of Toad. Incredible, incredible rocker. It knocks the skull to the toxic spread status. It's very, very annoying in that regard, right? Water Resort created immunity. Four times weakness to grass, but we can deal with that. And it's our only weakness, which is great. And on top of that, we have those matchups. We're going to Rain Dance, Life War. Three attacks, Swiss Swim, Size of Toad, and we take two on our way out, which is really cool. And it functions well on rain teams, whether it be offensively or defensively. So I think that's a great, uh, you know, addition to Size of Toad's, like, uh, kind of repertoire. I know, like, on Hunter's Sword and Shield Rain team, which Sword and Shield Rain is not a very common thing, but in DPL, uh, he had a Size of Toad on it as his ground, which, again, doubles as a Swift Swim Sweeper if he needs it, or as a Water Immunity and Electric Immunity on rain, which, again, is great. So... Overall, really, really solid Pokemon. Love this size of Toad. Over reliable. Swampert's better, obviously, but it's pretty close to mine. Love this size of Toad. Uh, next up, we have Throw and Sock. These guys are just going to go in C tier. Uh, Throw has some cool defensive value. Um, I think they both get guts. No, Throw gets guts. It's slower. Um, and it can be a little more defensive. Rest Talk variants are pretty cool. Bulk Up variants are pretty cool. And then Sock is more offensive, has sturdy, has Bolt Breaker, which is pretty cool, a little bit faster. Uh, but there's just always going to be better fighting types. That's to keep in mind with this guy. It's a I don't know. Next up, we have Lee Vanny. Gotta shout the, the mid tier web setters. Uh, it's gonna go here in C tier. What it does is it leads to the focus sash and clicks a uh, sticky web. It's decently fast too for a Weber, which is pretty nice, uh, avoiding a lot of taunts. So that's pretty cool. But at the end of the day, again, it's, uh, it's a Lee Vanny. So you can only get so much out of it, right? Alright, next up, we have Big Scolipede. I'm gonna have a hot take on the here. Um, not as much in Generation 8 
I think it struggled a little bit more offensively and um, also kind of hampered a little bit by no prevalent. But I love Gen 6 Scully as a great spiker, as where spikes are incredibly, incredibly important. And I love Gen 7 Scully as both a spiker and an SD win con. One of my first Pokemon that I actually really found successful was SDZ Skullwood I would spam it so often when I first started playing. It was such an incredible ability. Obviously, we're pretty weak off rip, but if we get up a Sword Dance, we're going to be strong, especially if we're throwing off a Boginium Z Mega Horn, a Groundium Z Earthquake, a Waterium Z Aqua Tail, whatever it might be, Skullwood's got coverage, which is pretty cool. A really strong Pokemon, Fast Spiker, also the Sash Endeavor Sensor is really great at getting up spikes and endeavoring something and keeping it weak, which is awesome. Big ups to Skullipede there. Big Whimsicott. Um, I think I'd be remiss to put it anywhere higher than C tier. Good value. Dr. Slacking might come to my throat on this one. Um, good value in C tier. Like, I think it's a good Pokemon. Correction for good ability. Defog on, or, yeah, on core, things like that. It can be very annoying. Sub Leech is incredible. Uh, but again, stats and typing just kind of let it down. So, All right, we'll talk about Lilligant and Hisui and Lilligant kind of at the same time. Lilligant is going to go... Right down here in D tier. Not a great Pokemon. Again, bad stats, bad typing, not great coverage. Quiver Dance Sweeper, but not great at it. However, Hisui and Lilligan, I think, definitely deserves a B tier shout. It's a Pokemon I haven't seen you super successful this gen. I used it well, I think, in a like, low tier Terra League or a good Terra. Um, and I was like, Terra Rock, Terra Fighting, I want to say. And it was it was fun. It was a really cool mod. Hard to position Victory Dance, though. As broken as Victory Dance sounds as a move. Also, if Victini comes back and it doesn't get Victory Dance because they're cowards, I'm going to be very upset. I mean, Victory Dance might make it bannable, but I don't care. Give it Victory Dance. Um, Lilligant, though, kind of struggles setting it up, right? Bad defensive typing, not bulky at all. But if you can get it up, great win con potential. It also has Chlorophyll as an option to be a Sun Sweeper slash Abuser. Um, it also has Hustle to hit really, really freaking hard. Triple Axel is great coverage for it as well. And that's cool utility options like Defog and Healing Wish, which I saw Amel usually go last season in BBR. So I guess Amel's used it well. So. No, that's someone. Yeah, good stuff. Next up, we have Basculin here. Now, this is kind of assuming that Last Respects is banned, because I think it's pretty universal that the move is banned everywhere, because it's very broken. Um, it probably goes a little, this guy probably goes a little bit higher, considering, but we'll just tear all of them together, assuming it's banned. Um, I think D tier, like high D tier, uh, potentially, we're gonna move the, like, the community down that I'm looking at, too. I think, like, high D tier, though, is pretty valid. Uh, decently strong Pokemon, again, like, Reckless and Adaptability are great abilities. Uh, do lots of damage. Wave Crash, if it's, like, a low tier Terramon, Terra Water is really strong. Um, the guy's pretty demonic, but if you're not playing, like, a low tier Terra League, then not super worth it, in my opinion. So it'll go down here in D tier. Next up, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I got to do it. My goat's going in S tier. I I can't stop drafting it. Whether it's in Gen 7, in Gen 6, in the Warriors Tour, Gen 7, Gen 8, Gen 9, I, I can't do it. I just drafted in the Usum Tour in Gen 7. It was just on our BBR Championship team. It was our playoff MVP by far. Crocodile is so good. Whether it be Intimidate Pivots, Rocks 3 Attacks, whatever it might be, it's Choice Scarf, Moxie, bulk up scale shot weakness policy whatever it's here to do resist berry whatever it's here to do it does it so well for a marginally cheap price 13 14 points whatever it might be it's going to do it really freaking well it is so reliable so strong it knocks spreads it's i mean <coughs> i'm getting worked up talking about my goat right here i i would i would do crazy things for my goat crocodile one of my favorite pokemon ever it, it, it's definitely solidified over the last like year how good I think this Pokemon is. Spoilers on my Usum team, by the way, which is going to be a really cool team. I hope I do well, because I know you guys are going to get a video in like two months um, on the team. I actually just get paid. I actually literally just got paid to draft in that, which is crazy. Um, hold on. Uh, spoilers. I know what I want. I want a Selgore Chimeco. A Selgore. I'm sorry. Immersion Break, Chimeco. And Chimeco's coming back. Are you kidding me? This team's, this team's drip. Uh. What's the, what's the dude's name? Mr. Z. Hi, right, Mr. Z. You're up, buddy. All right. Tangent over. I love you, Crocodile. Um, on to the next. We have Galarian Darmanitan. And this is going to be a hot take. I'm going to put this guy in A tier, not in S tier. Um, I think back in the day uh, of Generation back in the day, which is crazy to say, but back when Generation 8 first dropped, this guy was getting banned left and right. He's broken. He kills everything. If you guys don't know what Galarian Darmanitan does, it's an ability called Grill Attacker basically is an auto choice band as an ability so you're locked in the first move you click 
but you get a choice fan boost. On top of that, you get a scarf, or you get a ban, you're basically double ban boosting, or you can go like uh, Zen Mode, uh, which is this little guy down here, and go like Belly Drum, uh, with a Fire Ice Type, which is pretty darn cool. The issue is, is one, you're so hazard to be, really, really struggle with hazard to be, uh, um, and you really, really, I feel like offensively, it's really, really easy to deal with as well. Choice Band, really strong, but 95 isn't very fast, and 95 isn't the most broken Scarf for speed here. I think as long as you get up rocks, you have an Ice Resist, and you limit its switch-ins, you're gonna be okay with it. Now, that's not to say it's not very good. I just think it's not good enough to be in S tier, personally. That's just me. Next up is regular Darmanitan, which is gonna go down in B tier. Obviously, much worse. Same problem, right? In the sense that, like, you're really, really rock speak, and you have a shitty speed tier, bad defensive typing, uh, which is a little bit tough, but uh, Sheer Force Flare Blitz is a cool, and again, you aren't, like, as choice dependent, uh, and you're not auto-locked all the time, which is a, uh, you know, value. Um, but you can also be Belly Drum, uh, which is pretty cool. Not the greatest Pokemon in the world, but really fun wall breaker. And I definitely miss it being in the game. It's a fun mod to click buttons with. All right, next up is Maractus. It's going to go high here in D tier, but it's not going to go very high. It spikes, and it has a water immunity, which is pretty cool. Um, that's about it. Spikes, and it has water immunity. Like him, but not going to put him anything above that. Next up is Big Crustal, a Pokemon I personally really, really enjoy. Gonna go here pretty high in C tier. Absolutely love using this Pokemon in prior generations. Getting both Rocks, Spikes, and Knock. It's a great lead. You can even go Mickey Shell Smash sets with Sturdy. Pretty cool. Custet Berry sets are also, you know, very, very awesome as leads in a lot of matchups. If your opponent's really hazard weak, you're getting up a couple layers and you're putting yourself in a good spot. So definitely a really, really solid Pokemon. And one of my favorite low tiers draft when it's in the decks. Alrighty, we're back with a bottle of water, continuing from where we left, left off at Crustal, going into Scrafty, and I think Scrafty is definitely a B tier Pokemon when it comes to value. Obviously a lower tier fighting type, uh, but the dark fighting type is annoying to switch into, one, unless you're a fairy. But two, it's also very good defensively, whether it be Intimidate or Shed Skin, both phenomenal defensive abilities and really, really good to deal with, especially alongside, you know, tools like Bulk Up to set up. Um, but you also have like Dragon Dance Moxie variants that you can run and be a nuisance. Plus, in Generation 9, with the Terrestrialization mechanic, it becomes a huge, huge problem for a ton of teams to deal with. Um, Aster played phenomenally with Terra Scrafty in last season of BBR as uh, the runner up that season. Didn't end up coming in finals, and I was I was saying a prayer afterwards. I was so thankful that I did not have to deal with that guy. So um, definitely a really, really solid Pokemon for sure. Next up is Sigalyph. I think a fun wall breaker. A Pokemon I want to draft again because it's just a fun mon to use. Um, but I don't think I can put it anywhere higher than just above Swoobat. It's Psychic Flying counterpart in this generation. Uh, Magic Arch is obviously a great ability. Um, I used uh, Weakness Policy one time to sweep D-Ray um, with like a Cosmic Power variant. It's not very bulky though, so like often it's not going to work. I think I set up on like an Umbreon because Umbreon's terrible. Um, but traditionally it's going to be used like with like a Life Orb. Um, it has great coverage, it's just a little slow and a little frail, so it kind of struggles in a lot of matchups. But definitely a really fun Pokemon for sure. Next up is Kofagragus, which is another Pokemon that has great value in Generation 6 and 7. I don't remember seeing it too often in generation eight but i think it definitely deserves like a low b tier shout out mummy is an incredible ability especially in the physical attackers that you're going to be checking with your phenomenal physical defense set getting rid of their ability altogether so um if you guys watch my oras video uh, one of the best megalopony checks in the game one of the best mega metacham checks in the game because they can hit you that one time either in general with lop or hard with medi but then you mummy away their ability that they're dependent on and they really really struggle it gets t spikes it gets calm mind and ask it's a great offensive trick room center it gets pain split to kind of keep itself healthy and well down other opponents using uh pokemon things of the sort and so overall just a really solid pokemon defensively is like a low tier defensive pivot so i think he definitely deserves a shout out here in b tier considering what's in c tier um at least in my opinion Next up, what do we got? Are we to, we're to the Caracosta tier. Big Caracosta is unfortunately not gonna go anywhere higher than D tier. Not a very viable Pokemon. I guess it shell smashes and it has sturdy, um, but it's too slow to really take advantage of it in my opinion. And that's kind of what it comes down to. I guess it rocks as well. Don't think it gets spikes and it's kind of stuff. Tortuga is a Pokemon that smashed me in Little Cup all the time. Two great Little Cup Pokemons in these guys. Um, yeah, not great otherwise. Then we have big Archeops. Um, really fun Pokemon. I like Archeops a lot. I don't think I can put it higher than the C tier, but really fun. Obviously, it has one of the worst abilities you can defeat us, but if you're above half health, 
you hit really hard. Um, you hit really, really hard from both sides and are pretty darn fast as well. It got fun options in Generation 8, like Meteor Beam, too, so you can be a more special attacking variant with like Heat Wave and um, Air Slash and things of the sort. Uh, you can also just click, you know, uh, Stone Edge slash Head Smash and click Acro if you're no item. And you have the option of Boots now, which keeps you healthy a little bit longer, which I think is pretty darn cool. So, not as contingent on getting rid of hazards all the time. Next up, we have Car Boater, one of my favorite spikers ever i think it has to go in b tier here i think it's incredibly valuable great as a fighting resist fairy resist spiker rocky helmet aftermath and even fun autonomy sets if you're feeling extra crazy but 99.99 times out of 100 you're just running a physically defensive set um with uh you know clear smogger haze pain split toxic toxic spikes gong shot um gets ground coverage and grass coverage too so like it has a pretty diverse offensive move pool um which is cool to not be walled by things Overall, pretty cool. All right, Hisuian, Zoroark, and Zoroark. Now, there's gonna be a pretty big disparity between these two, I cannot lie to you. We're gonna go ahead and put Zoroark here in like C tier, probably like down here in my opinion. And then we're gonna put Zoroark in A tier. Now, what makes them do? Why is Zoroark Hisui better than Unovan Zoroark? Well, the main reason is just typing. Offensively and defensively, normal ghost is just great. You have one weakness in Normal Ghost, despite not being a very bulky Pokemon. Only one weakness in uh, Knock Off, opposed to, you know, uh, Dark Type, which has plenty more fighting and fairy and bug and, you know, multitude of other really common offensive typings. On top of not being uh, very bulky, Zorak is, uh, Hisui is faster at 110. And offensively, Ghost plus Normal stab combination is incredibly, incredibly strong to where you can actually put a lot more damage on some opposing teams. Um, you both have a pretty similar tool set otherwise. Um, other than that, but I think just like the stab combo of normal ghost offensively and defensively and the extra speed makes his Zorak Hisui actually usable with disguise, whereas uh, regular Zorak is much, much more difficult to use and I think is actually pretty terrible personally. So, yeah, I think that guy goes down to C tier and Zorak Hisui is an A tier Pokemon. Ah, uh, maybe not A tier. We're gonna put it in, we're gonna put in B tier, but still a solid Pokemon nonetheless. Uh, I'll put it in like mid B tier. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Next up, we have Sinchino, who definitely got better in this generation with Tidy Up. I cannot say it's great, though. I'm going to go ahead and put it here in C tier. Um, Tidy Up is a cool option for it. Technician Tail Slaps and things like that. Really strong. Um, as well as Scale Link, too, if you want to go, like, Protective Pads or something like that. Pretty cool, because uh, you're pretty big Rocky Helmet Fodder. And Tidy Up lets it remove hazards and get a little Dragon Dance boost going. So um, that's valuable in its own right. Next up, we have Gothita and Gothitelle. We're actually going to put Gothita in... B tier, and I'll explain that in a minute, and Gothitelle in A tier. I think that the value of trapping alone as a concept and ability is incredible. And in past generations, it was trapping fat things, right? You're kind of using Gothitelle incorrectly if you're trying to like use it to trap something set up and sweep, in my opinion. In most matchups, there's going to be something that just kind of like beats whatever combination of four moves you can fit. Um, but if you're running like Charm, Confide, Rest, Taunt, and you're PP stalling something in generation six, seven, and eight, and absolutely removing a crazy fat piece, that's incredibly valuable, especially for pairing with knockoff spam to get rid of shed shells. Again, absolutely incredible. You can also use it as like an opportunity, like, you know, Calm Mind 1v1 beat something, like Taunt, Calm Mind, Rest, Psychic, something really, really passive. Um, so that's a really cool aspect of it. And then Generation 9, I still think it's good. I just think it's only good with like Terra. And I think a little bit better offensively using like, you know, I, I remember I played a Gothitelle in a league, like a Terra Gothitelle in a league, and I had a Lander's Eye. Um, Sheer Force, and it was really, really good in the match. My opponent did not have switch in, and I didn't really respect the possibility of Terra Ice Gothitelle. And I killed something with my Landers early game. The Scarf Gothitelle came in, clicked Terra Blast Ice, and eliminated the biggest threat to the opposing team, and it was used more offensively in that regard. A little bit more Doug Trio esque. So I think the option to be able to do both, and it's history throughout Draft League in general, makes it deserve A tier. Goth uh, Gothita is in B tier because it's like three, four points and can do similar things to as Gothitelle against fat Pokemon. Um, it is incredibly, incredibly bulky for very cheap and often discounted a lot more and not accounted for in the builder. So I think it's very, very valuable for how cheap it typically is. I remember back in the day when it was going for like two, three points and then people were like, wait a minute, we need to, we need to bump this a little bit. Now it's also not a Pokemon that fits on every team. So don't just go around drafting Gothita um, or yeah, it's Gothrita, Gothita, Gothita. Don't just go around drafting Gothita because it has it can trap things. If it doesn't fit your specific team, 
leave it alone. It's not gonna do anything for you, and you're gonna regret the pickup big time. All right, two of my favorite, or one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, coming next. We'll talk about his pre Evo first and um, Duosion. There was a big hype train on Duosion back in like Gen Seven. I'm right. When we see it drafted, I don't think it's great. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here in D tier. Again, bulky, calm mind, iron defense can do a lot of things that Reuniclus can do, just only the defensive aspects of it, and is such crazy knock fodder. Whereas Reuniclus can get around that a lot of times. And it's a Pokemon that, while maybe not great this generation, I want to draft it and see if I can make it work this gen. Uh, but in past gens, with fatter sets, whether it be the dreaded double dance Reuniclus, the acid armor, calm mind, psychic slash sword power, and recover set. This is the Pokemon that made you draft a dark type. You played a Reuniclus when you first started playing draft, didn't have a dark type, got swept by that set, and then we're like, I'm never not drafting Crocodile again. That's me. Um, but on top of that, we have those sets. We also have Calm Mind 2 attacks, which recover without options to take dark types and like a dark and steel types and like Focus Blast in the past, Signal Beam, um, Hidden Powers, things like that. Or you have offensive Trick Room sets with Life Orb, Trick Room, and then like just crazy strong hitting attacks because Reuniclus is ridiculously strong. Or you have Assault Vest Regenerator sets. Yes, not only Magikarp, we also have Regenerator as an ability, which means we can come in, take crazy hits, spread knockoffs, um, Psychic, Thunder, uh, E-Ball, Focus, whatever coverage you want to run. Um, be a great special sponge and really strong, get in and out and kind of, you know, heal your health that way. Really, really fun Pokemon. I think it struggles a lot in Generation 9 because of the nerf to recover. Losing half of them makes those setup sets that sit there for a long time, those Crit Me Not variants, makes them a lot worse. And the metagame is just more offensive and strong, can kind of push through it a little bit easier. Um, so I think that's a little bit tough, but in general, one of my favorite Pokemon ever. I, I loved using it in Generation 7 and 8. One of my favorite Pokemon. Love it was Z in Gen 7 too. I think as a sleeper Z-mon, uh, not having to take full power knockoffs um, without just like being Colber and getting like a one-time nuke. Pretty damn cool. Especially too, because like we could easy fight and not miss Focus Blast, which is nice. So yeah, overall great Pokemon. Love that guy. Um, now we're back to certified Gen five bangers like swana swana is gonna go in d tier swana is a swana and doesn't do anything um so i it's gonna go in d tier i don't even know what swana does i'll be 100 percent honest with you i won't lie to you and be like man i saw swana do something once i've never seen it drafted nor used and if i have it was so unimpressive that i forgot about it so i'm not gonna pretend to you like it's good it's just not gonna happen did i get pinged again I was worried that it was going to be, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the draft, and I did something wrong. All right. Next up, where are we at? Vanillux. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what this one is called. I always forget. It's, yeah, it's Vanillite, Vanillish, Vanillux. Okay, I always mix up the middle forms and the final forms in some of these mods. I have, like, similar names throughout. Um, but I think this guy definitely deserves C tier. I think in Generation 8, it was a lot of fun to use. Um, I think offensively with, like, Blizzard Spam, obviously Snow Warning, setting up the hail hail back then not snow you zoomers um setting up the hail throwing off really strong specs blizzards was pretty cool especially because with those offensive ices back in the day with hail up not only were you clicking strong blizzards even if a steel type was coming in it's coming in taking hazards blizzard and then hail chip which really will it down and then it also got option the option of aurora veil in that generation which let it set up screens for its team to support its teammates a little bit better which was pretty darn cool and definitely a really cool aspect to Vanillix, uh, making it a lot better in that generation. I can't lie and say it was good. Still bad speed tier, bad bulk, bad move pool uh, offensively, but it did what it was supposed to do well, and I think that's valuable. All right, on to Sawsbuck. I'm just going to pick the one I like the most um, design-wise. I think it's the winter one. That guy's really cool. It's winter or autumn are the ones I like the most. I think I'm going to go winter, though. Um, I mean, all this just to put it in, like, D tier this oh no i want to move this lower um it is not great it is a sauce buck it technically is chlorophyll um serene grace headbutt yeah pretty cool uh pretty bad pokemon though unfortunately a uh, cool design cool gimmick i like it i think it's a really really elegant design uh, but i'd be lying to you if i said it was good next up we have a certified amomon in a big Emolga. Emolga is also going to go in d's here i'm trying to find where though because i actually think it's Pretty okay electric flying is an incredible typing right it's just really held back by stats and move pool um but electric flying incredible typing it gets u-turn and volt switch as a pivot i believe it got debug before i think it also gets nuzzle which is a great tool um and it gets energy bolt hit ground technically not very hard 
but technically. I remember one time I was playing Amol with another Gen 5 mod, and I remember in the builder, I looked at Amol's team, and I was like, holy moly, he gets smoked by Offensive Toad. So I ran that aforementioned Swift Swim Life Orb 3 attack set, and it had the capabilities of Okoing every Pokemon on his build that he brought, except Emolga. I remember looking at the calc, looking at Hydro Pump in the rain, it was either Hydro Pump or Sheriff in the rain, and seeing that it super Okoed Emolga, even if it was max HP. I clicked the attack, did not kill because he was max spadef for that specific bring and he okoed me with an energy ball um like or i guess like afterlife orb chip so it has its uses i'm not gonna pretend like i think it's good but it is a usable pokemon so we're, we're gonna put it we'll give it a little respect here in uh d tier these are like i think this is the cutoff right now and usable pokemon in d tier i'm also gonna move this guy down webs are terrible okay next up of Escavalier. Um, really solid steel type. I'm gonna put it in B tier, low B tier. I think it's much better than everything in C tier. Um, lack of reliable recovery, but strong offensively. This is a Pokemon I saw all the time in Generation 7. Uh, but it knocks, it drill runs. Um, I believe we got close combat in Gen 8, which is pretty cool. It can be a bulky SD variant, uh, but really it's tried and true butter is going to be Assault Vest. It's gonna be a great Assault Vest mod. It could pursue back in the day too. Really, really bulky. Only one weakness too, which is really valuable. Just gotta be careful about those HP fires back in the day, right? Um, but if you deal with that, you're in a pretty good spot. Solid Pokemon. Really strong, too, offensively. Like, really, really strong. All right, next up is Amoongus, and this might be another hot take. I don't think Amoongus is a very good Pokemon. I really don't think it's very good. I'm going to put it in B tier. I think it's a little bit passive. I think Spore is very uh, manageable in um, singles, and especially in a counter-draft format where we know what our opponent has. It's really bulky and it has regen, but I think it's pretty exploitable otherwise um, because of how weak it can be. Um, obviously, we have Spore. Sorry, I just got a text message. Um, obviously, we have Spore as an option, but if our opponent's accounting for that, it'd be tough to use. I'm not, maybe it's, again, it's personal bias showing through, but that's what these lists are, they're personal. Um, and I think it's kind of mediocre, personally. All right, next up, what do we got? We got Jellicent. And speaking of personal bias, put my goat in A tier. Again, maybe it's also recency bias because I've just drafted it like three times in old gen leagues recently. But I love this guy. Incredibly bulky. He's got multiple good abilities and like, uh, especially Water Sword, but also Cursed Body. Which is pretty darn cool. Um, really good on the physical defensive side, especially defensive side. If you want to go offensive Trick Room, that's great. Even Scarf Water Spout in some matchups could definitely put in some work. Um, as well as like the Taunt variants. I love the Taunt Stall Breaker variants where you Scald, Taunt, Recover, Fourth, Nightshade, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, whatever it might be. Really, really annoying for fatter teams to deal with. Incredibly bulky, incredibly annoying. Pokemon that was a staple on a lot of my old teams, especially. And I think uh, that Aferman Extra Drill team, Extra Drill Giggle with Latios team that I won NCP with him today, I'm pretty sure the water on the team was Jellicent. I'm, I'm pretty sure at least. You'd think I'd remember that after winning the championship, but yeah, we're gonna put it there. Next up is Aloe. I'm going to put Aloe in B tier as well. I'm a big, I, at least in the past, I was a really big Aloe hater. I would have brought this guy super, super low. But I think objectively, if it's on the right team and it's used correctly, it's a good Pokemon. Best spill in the game. It can, uh, you know, pivot and uh, baton pass and flip turn now, which is great. Gets knockoff, gets scald to spread burns, it gets toxic and ulgent. And again, it's a Pokemon that if you're not aptly prepared, it could be really, really obnoxious. Again, I think it's very, very exploitable though. Um with uh proper prep and play um but otherwise really solid mon really really good pickup or a really good mom all right next up what do we got what do we got where are we at oh galvantula um i think galvantula definitely deserves a b tier shout out obviously it's i think it's like the this and robami are the two best choice specs are um both both the best web pokemon like sticky web mods this is it like yeah they set up webs they're both very fast. This one's 108, slower than Rwambi. But they also do things outside of just webbing. I think that's valuable, right? I'm not drafting Levani because I don't care about three point sticky whip that I'm never gonna bring. But Galvantula is strong offensively. Like compound eyes, I can click Thunder, then I have the combination of Bug Buzz, uh, Energy Ball, and Volt Switch to kind of hit a lot of the game incredibly, incredibly hard. I get Thunder things too, and I can set up those sticky webs that we're talking about, which my opponent is gonna be stressed about the entire game and can be taken advantage of. So, oh, Pokemon for sure. All right, next up we have Pharisee and Ferrothorn. Pharisee's just mini Ferrothorn. We'll talk about Ferrothorn here in a second, but I think Pharisee definitely deserves like a C tier, low C tier shout out. I think it's better than everything in here. Um, but Big Pharaoh is going up in S tier. 
trying to draft like staple. I miss him so much. Uh, I miss this guy so, so much. We just knock, we spike, we rock, we thunder wave, we gyro ball. We do the same thing over and over and over again. But we are so damn good at it. Four times fire weakness, really being our only weakness outside of fire. I guess we have fighting as well. Uh, but really the only thing that threatens GM1 is going to be those fire modes. As long as we have a good water slash fire resist with it. Um, it's going to be incredibly annoying to take down. Because lead seeds, knockoffs, and gets up hazards. <sighs> And then you have like iron bars plus um Rocky Helmet uh really really chipping down physical attackers. I get really really over centralizing Pokemon really obnoxious for a lot of teams to deal with. Absolutely love that guy. We're actually zooming right now, we're actually getting really close. Alright, let's keep rolling. We're gonna go fast. Cling clang. Terrible. Not a very good Pokemon. Steel type shift gear, but terrible move pool. I think it deserves to go right here. Somewhat draftable, but terrible move. Electros just recently used him in LTM, um, and it put in crazy work in a run one game. No weakness is great. Incredible move pool, which is great. Not great stats. So again, kind of gets held back in that regard for kind of being mediocre there, uh, but still a very, very good Pokemon. I like him a lot. And it's also a really cool design, by the way. I don't think people talk about how cool Electros actually looks, considering he also just does not have any weakness. It's just a really sick mon. Um, Behem is going to be next. I think that this guy is going to go like in D tier as well. Like Trick Room, offensive guy, can call my nasty plot, has like Thunderbolt, I think is coverage, so not coverage hit Dark Tides, just a little bit tough because Signal Beam's gone, but maybe like low tier Terra be him, would be pretty cool. Um, I like his design, again, two, I just love this desk, it's a great deck. Um, Chandelure, I think Chandelure definitely deserves a B tier. Shout out, I'm gonna put it below Darm, I prefer Darm as like an offensive fire, uh, but this thing's decent. Scarf, decent with specs, Boots is a great aspect of it too, has a mutiny, flash fire, and fighting type. Um, so that's pretty darn cool too. It's great for a Pokemon that doesn't have great bulk because it gives us more opportunities to get in. Um, has good coverage and just really strong. It just really struggles with speed being mediocre and it's both being terrible. Uh, if this thing was like 10 points faster, it'd be broken. Um, <laughs> or if we got Shadow Tag like it was supposed to originally. Thankfully, you don't have to deal with that. All right, next up, we have Big Haxorus, a really, really fun Pokemon. I don't think I can justify it putting it any higher than B tier, objectively. Is it fun? Yes. It is a Pokemon that I, all the time, well, if I have extra points available, and like Haxorus is there, it fits the team, I'm always going to draft it because obviously Dragonance, tried and true, very solid. Swords and Skill Shot is incredibly terrifying. Or just Choice Band, click a button. I mean, it even gets random first impression to pick things off when they're weakened. Really, really strong Pokemon, honestly. Absolutely love it. It has Mold Breakers and Ability and a Nerve, which are both great. Oops, I dropped my cap. Both great offensive abilities. It's a Pokemon that's like never really required to be on a team. It's never like, man, I really wish I have a hack had a hack versus this week. But if you can fit it and you have the right pieces and you have everything else you need, dude, why not get you around seven hackers and have fun three weeks when you bring it and it just kills everything. Like, it's also one of those Pokemon that can super hijack a matchup. It's really, really easy. All right, next up, I oh, will put Fracture in D tier because he's technically draftable too. It's actually better than a lot of these guys. I'll we'll put him right here. Uh, not great, but if you like bulky, he's still very strong. So that's cool. All right, Bear Tick. I don't think I can justify putting it above D tier. Again, low tier Terra, cool option, but I'm drafting Sand Slash. Uh, like, I'm, I'm not drafting Bear Tech, personally. Um, can be cool in that regard, but most mons get a lot better and they can change their typing, get extra coverage, and flip their defensive matchups. So, yeah, definitely interesting. All right, next up is Cryogonal. I'm a big Cryo hater. A lot of people love Cryo defensively or like as a, like a low tier spinner. My issue with Cryo is I feel like it loses rockers, right? It's too weak to actually threaten ground types with like ice beams and freeze dries. They really just kind of bounce off. Um, you get blown by stone edge. It also loses two rock type rockers. It also gets blown up by steel type rockers. Um, does not have a great move pool. He's very, very frail on the physically defensive side. And I think that's a big move to pack a lot of I don't think I can just try and put him above the uh, bottom of C tier. While it is draftable as a spinner, I would personally never do so. All right, next up, what do we got? We got Big Aselgore. Aselgore's gonna go probably pretty high here in C tier. Yeah? Yeah, I like Aselgore a lot. As you guys heard literally earlier in this video, I literally just drafted it in Gen 7. It's a good low point spiker. It's fast, you can final gambit to prevent spins too, or just be final gambit in general. There are definitely some matches where offensively they'll be really good. I remember back in Gen 7, or Gen 8, 
We saw a lot of unburden, uh, which is the unburden set, but um, throat spray as an item. A lot of times it's like bug buzz, get the boost, focus blast after as the cool coverage move, sludge bomb. Really cool design too. I like a silver a lot. So I guess there's that. All right, next up, the dichotomy of man. Two really good Pokemon, or one really good Pokemon and a terrible one with the same Pokemon. Galarian Stunfisk is one of the worst Pokemon of all time. I hate him. He's gonna go right in front of Watchhog. However, regular Stunfisk is going in A tier. Why is regular Stunfisk going in A tier? He's worth like five or six points to me. <laughs> exactly. With five or six points in Generation 8, he checks Happy Poco, he checks Terra Aura, he checks Tornadus, he doesn't die to anything, he's a static pair, he can beat statics, Ground Electric is an incredible typing, it's incredibly annoying to switch into because it pairs everything, and even gets random skull and toxic, and it's just a nuisance. Great Stealth Rocker, for the price point that you get Stunfisk at, I'm assuming for any who play Generation 8 Draft, you'll know like the steady rise in Stunfisk pricing throughout leagues. This guy is incredible. Really, really great Pokemon, so it's gonna go up there. All right, Mian Shao. Mian Shao's gonna go in A tier also. I love me some Mian Shao. Again, regenerate your best ability in the game, especially on an offensive fighting type that's clicking U turn, knock off, close combat, slash high jump kick the entire game. It'd be annoying. You can SD, which is cool. Most of the time you're gonna solve Vester Scarf, uh, typically Scarf a lot of time. But there's also the option of Reckless High Jump Kick. There's matches where your opponent just does not have a switch in to a choice band Reckless High Jump Kick. If they don't have an immunity, they don't have a switch into it. So there's matches where you can afford to go a little more offensive with it. Maybe risk it for the biscuit a little bit more and just absolutely nuke it through your opponents. So, gotta give him his shout out. Next up, we have Dratagon. I like Dratagon a lot. This Pokemon's gonna go here and see here. Um, offensively, it's really solid. Defensively, it's great too. Has great abilities in Bold Breaker and Ruskin as those abilities, and has Sheer Force offensively as an ability. It gets glared a pair of things. It's a really reliable rocker, especially with Mold Breaker for Magic Bounce Mons. You know, offensively, incredibly strong. Has a lot of great coverage. Really, really slow, so it's not like sweeping anybody. But teams don't like switching into Dreadagon. Dreadagon's really strong um, and pretty decently bold too. Really great Pokemon. I miss that guy a lot too. There's a lot of mods I miss from Gen 8, 7, and are in this deck. And a lot of them are Gen 5 guys, I'm noticing. Alright, next up is Golurk. Golurk definitely deserves a C, C tier shout out. Um, solid Pokemon for sure. Solid rocker. Um, strong offensively. Uh, can rock polish and win. Can be choice fan and kill everything. So, solid Pokemon. Can't complain, right? Definitely can't complain when you got that guy. Fish Sharp is going here in the C tier. I. I almost want it's better than Zorak, so I cannot put it there. This is one of the most overrated Pokemon of all time. People draft this thing and swear it's good. People draft this thing and swear it's good. I played a game the other day. You know what? No, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull it up. I want you guys to see how terrible this guy is. Now I know he is he's four times weak to fighting. Okay, preface, I know this going into this. But I would like you to see how terrible this Pokemon is. Where is it? Hold on. This is uh it was a Hoenn Castle game. Alright, it was before Matthias. Before Matthias. Dude, I gotta find it. I, I swear, I have to show this guy being a bum. Week 3. Okay, what happened? There it is. Weaver's gone. So, we'll look at this real quick. I'm not even gonna fix the dimensions. We're not even gonna watch the full game. Um, I'm on this side. It's Gen 7. D, blow something up, go clef, bam, 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 bam. Oh, I went too far. So, I go Bishop. What do I do? I think I... I think I went hard Bishop on Reunion Quest right here. And I get in on a Psychic. I'm Choppel Bay. Now, I won't lie to you, this is a friends league. It's a little bit more casual for me. So, I built my team and I'm trying hard to win. But I didn't super sweat the calcs. Pretty offensive, but I'm I'm Choppel Bay. Like live a focus blast. Not for lopping, but live a focus blast from this guy. In my head, Bob's dead. Parrot. I can win with this guy, or at least pick off two before I go down. So, like, alright, word. We're gonna SD up. Do some damage, baby. I click SD. Stays in the focus blast. I'm like, word, we live. Chopple. Dead. In my head, I'm like, yo. That's life orb reuni. Now we know. Also, big shout out to my goat reuni quest. We know it's a more offensive variant. I go into Glade. I knock off. He's not. He's max HP. He's ma He's no special attack. He's modest, but he's no special attack and not life orb. He did 103 min. I calc it after. 103 minimum. Minimum. With a Choppel Fairy. He's terrible. Focus Blast killed two of them. Uninvested. Terrible Pokemon. 
don't like him. Slow, not strong, and especially in generation nine, is very undraftable without knockoff. It's okay, it's strong, but terrible speeds here. Uh, not very bulky, don't like the typing. Uh, without knockoff in generation nine, I think it's very, very bad. Bisharp Slander, we hate Bisharp in this, uh, in this house. All right, next up, what do we got? We got Hishuian Braviary and regular Braviary. Um, these guys, we're gonna put regular Braviary here in C tier. I think it's a solid defogger, pretty strong offensively as a Scarfer. Bulk up like Spadef sets are also really, really annoying, especially in prior generations. Suing Bravery is gonna go a little bit higher. Um, I think it has crazy making potential, whether it be Tinted Lens sets or Sheer Four sets. Really strong offensively and really good with Terra, actually. Incredible with Terra. So deserves, I think it deserves to be a little bit higher. Polybi gonna go here in like C tier as like a low tier Evil Light guy. Um, Defogs is bulky, annoying. U turns and knocks. Pretty passive, but draftable for sure. Um, and then Mandibuzz. I think Mandibuzz objectively deserves to go in B tier. Um, I'm not a big Mandibuzz guy though. I think it's very passive and exploitable. I think it keeping Toxic was great this gen, keeping Knock and Roost and all those things, but I think it's very exploitable. And it's not a Pokemon I particularly enjoy super a lot. Um, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. Again, personal list. So what can you do? All right, next up, what do we got? There's so many mods at the end of this deck that we have to, we have to get through. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna push through. We're gonna get there, guys. I promise. It's a big ass Pokedex. Bufalon. Bufalon's a Pokemon I've seen used a lot in Generation Six draft. A lot in Generation Six draft. Not as much in Gen Seven, a little bit, and then definitely not in Gen Eight, and Gen Nine. Uh, but I think it definitely deserves like a C tier shout out. Um, really bulky, really strong. SD is great. Assault Vest is great, and it gets Sap Cipher as an immunity, which is great. Also, just cooler design than regular Torah, so I think he deserves a shout out because super sick nasty. Goated guy. Um, then we have Heatmore. Heatmore is gonna go here in D tier, not very draftable. Um, has a cool move pool, Fire Lash in Gen 8. It's pretty cool as a magician, but bad speed and bad bolt, uh, which is not a great combination for a fire deck. Alright, next up we have Durant. I think Durant's a really strong wall breaker. Um, I think with Terra it could be cool, but obviously we haven't seen anything with Terra. I think it does definitely deserves to be in C tier, probably right around the middle. All right, next up, you're on to the pseudo legendary Hydreigon, and of course he's gonna go in S tier. Uh, but one of the tradition is in six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, it being a great scarfer throughout its lifespan, great with specs or with the life form. Great as like a bulky roosting defogger in past generations and getting reliable recovery, losing that in generation nine, but also gaining access to Terra. And I think it's a great Terra Mon too. So I think it definitely deserves the S tier shout out. Same thing with Volcarona, a Pokemon that has seen incredible, incredible success um, throughout generation uh generation nine in particular, with uh you know Terra being really, really solid in this Pokemon. But even without Terra, it's still very good. It got boots, and again, it's that quiver menace, but also like Bulky U-turn variants or Specs variants are really, really fun to use and really tough for some teams to deal with. So, just a Volk in that regard for sure. All right, we're getting to we're getting to the home stretch here. We're, we got a lot of forms though, which is going to make this go a lot, a lot longer. We're going to tier them all pretty much together um, in trios and in duos going forward. All right, all right, let's do it. Cobalion, we'll just rank them in. So we'll do Swords of Justice, right? I'll rank them in ascending order so from bottom on up first up we have Verizion. Verizion's going to go pretty low in c tier i think it's definitely better than a lot of these guys for sure but i wouldn't lie to you and tell you this book one is good necessarily bad typing um good spin that which is pretty cool i think cobalion as much hate as it gets definitely deserves a b tier slot just because of the fact that it's very very bulky on the physical side uh, Body Press is a great uh, addition to its move full of this generation, and it's a really reliable rocker, which can be kind of weak. And then Terrakion. Where's Terrakion? There he is. Big guy is going to go up here. Probably an A tier. Really, really strong Pokemon. We're going to put him up in the end right now. But put him up here. Uh, really, really strong Pokemon. I'm personally not a big Terrakion fan. I feel like it either is outsped by everything if it's not Scarf, and or doesn't get the Okos into it kills it if it's not banded. But un unguardable. Uh, dual stab combination unless your name is H slash or Goldango. Then you get Earthquake for those guys, which is pretty cool. So they gotta be on a blue and not get it popped. Or be Shulka Barriers or something like that. And then lastly, we have Keldeo, only gonna rank Resolute. I think Keldeo is traditionally, I think it has to be considered an S tier. Um, just because of how good it has been traditionally over drafts history. Generation 6 and 7 
incredible threat in Generation 7, it's an incredible threat in Generation 8, it's an incredible threat. I don't remember if it's in the game or not. I haven't seen it very well. Um, if it is, um, no, it's definitely in the game, so solid in Gen 9, I'm assuming. Um, I haven't seen it used very much, though, but strong, bulky, annoying, Calm Mind Specs, Scarf, whatever it might be, those three things is really all it does, but it does them really well. Gets Taunt, it also gets Flip Turn from Momentum, which is cool. Alright, so we've gotten through those guys. Now, we're gonna rank the Incarnate Genies and then the Therian Genies. You guys ready? First up, we have Torn, which is gonna be the worst of the three, in my personal opinion. We're gonna go ahead and still put this guy in B tier. Um, decently strong offensively. I didn't really enjoy it in LTM. I thought it was gonna be much better in low tier, but it wasn't. Unreliable main stab is kind of tough, um, and not being very bulky is also darn tough. The second best of those genies, I think, is going to Thunderous Incarnate, and I think this guy also goes debatably in S tier, strictly because of how good it was in Generation 6 and 7. I think it's fallen off pretty bad in Generation 8 and 9, but I think Thundy definitely deserves an, eight, an S tier shout out um, because of how good it was in Gen 6 with how prominent Para was in Para Spam, just thunder waving everything. In Generation 7, it could still do that, but it also could like nasty plot and Z move, and it was a great Z move candidate. It's also pretty solid with Terra in Gen 9, so no, I think it definitely deserves an S tier. And lastly, we have Lando I. Lando I is definitely going to go pretty high here. While I do think this Pokemon is pretty darn fraudulent, it's still very, very good. Um, and very, very strong offensively with Sheer Force, great coverage offensively. I think it's not as good in Generation 9 because of the fact that it lost access to a Rock Polish. So now you're really only a Breaker um, with like either just four attacks or maybe a Nasty Plot variant. I really, really think that it misses Rock Polish is a great, because it was a great, great ending of Pokemon slash Cleaner. Um, so I think that being gone is a little tough. All right, next up we have the Therians. Oh my goodness, all these guys are broken. Uh, we're gonna put Thundy T probably at the top of A tier. Really great Pokemon. I think it's actually having a great generation this gen. Is incredible with Terra. I think it kind of lacks in prior generations. Generation seven, it was awesome with Z, uh, but in generation six and eight, it was a little bit mediocre compared to the other ones. Again, still a great Pokemon in those gen, so keep that in mind. Uh, maybe it deserves S tier. I don't know. Maybe I could be tripping. Then second, this is hard. Both of these Pokemon are incredible and definitely S tier in their own right. It's going to be Lando T. I think that we put um, a little bit behind Torn T, but. And if he's still great, whether it be Scarf, um, whether it be SD Rock Polish, uh, Double Dance, whether it be Assault Vest, whether it be Rocky Helmet, it be just your Rock or Rock's three attacks. It does it so freaking well. It's a great glue piece. Uh, but I think Torn T is eternal and has to be considered the best Pokemon on this tier list. Um, whether it be in Generation 6, where it was typically Assault Vest and very bulky annoying, region pivot in and out, things like that. Generation 7, where it was either AV or it was running Z Fly as a really reliable hurricane while still being very defensively solid and sound. Whether it be Generation 8, where it got access to heavy duty boots and didn't have to take rocks anymore and hazards, or Generation 9, where Terra Torn took a much more offensive turn and you started seeing much more offensively minded tornadoes with either nasty plot or even choice specs and band variants like i remember seeing like a dpl game where like the opposing team didn't have a ghost resist so choice band terror ghost uh torn ripped through them because it's fast it's bulky it region pivots in and out and it gets multiple opportunities to do what it's supposed to do i think it's by far the best pokemon on this tier list i guess by far is a little bit crazy but it's definitely one of the best pokemon on this tier list Next up, we'll go ahead and do the Kyurems. Uh, I think Kyurem Black, we'll just at least mention him in S tier, because in the past he has been allowed in Generation 6 and 7. Now you saw in the Gen 7 replay, Z Kyurem was awesome in Gen 7, Gen 6, he was pretty solid. Generation 8 and 9 is when he's been banned though, because he got extra Dragon Dance. There has been leagues that have allowed Kyurem Black since, um, just like Dragon Dance banned. I think he's still too broken personally with like Ice School Spear. Um, like home claws and scale shot and things like that uh it getting physical ice stab made it really, really gross to me um but i think he definitely deserves a shout out on this list because he was allowed before um uh, and then lastly or not lastly we got two more a regular kiram another s tier pokemon though man like gen 8 kiram absolutely different beast gen 7 kiram gen 6 kiram i remember back in the day was like a tier 2 tier 3 pokemon when i first started which is crazy thinking now because it's still just as good in those generations it didn't have freeze dry i guess but i feel like gen 8 happened it got freeze dry so people were like oh i want to try this guy more and then they realized holy shit kiram is broken and then we started seeing more experimentation of it in prior gens which 
you start raising a price there too. Um, incredibly bulky, incredibly annoying. Whether it be choice specs variants, which are ungodly hard to switch into, sub roost variants and past generations, dragon dance variants in generation eight and nine, um, heavy duty boots, three attacks, resets. Like it just does its job so well. Really, really strong. Really, really bulky too. Uh, pressure stalls some things out. And then lastly, big shouts to AV Charge Beam, Big Cory. Um, I don't think I could put this guy any higher than B tier, but Melo is a solid AV pivot. Um, decently solid scar for sometimes, and you could do funny things with the pirouettes. Yeah, that is going to be our tier list. Please let me know what you guys think down in the uh, comments below. Let me know if you would have changed anything. If you think I'm a crazy person, I love having these discussions with you guys down there. And uh, yeah, again, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like on the video. And if you're new here, drop a sub. See you guys next time. Later.